I hope to make this informative and fun. Uh, basically, I'm going to take you on a tour of, of my art career. And the opening slide here is making a living as an artist. And it's an ongoing process. And I know there's a few artists in here. And uh, making a living as an artist is not an easy journey, but it's one that I love. And uh, so I'm going to take you a little bit on my personal journey as an artist. And at the end of the presentation, I will open it up to question and answer. How many of you are wanting to make a, a living as an artist, or at least sell some art of your own? How many? Wow, good portion of you. OK, well, I ho hope to give you some insights and some advice and help. And uh, if there's other artists in the audience who want to contribute to anything that I say, I'm open to that as well. What Let gave me the bug? When I was uh, in grade school, I saw many Walt Disney movies. The Jungle Book, Sword in the Stone, uh, Snow White, Bambi. Bambi was powerful to me. Um, and I was totally amazed at the, how the characters were drawn, how the backgrounds were painted, how artists had created this whole world that we saw as moving and sound and color. And I was totally fascinated with that. And that's what I wanted to be when I grew up. I'm still working on that. I'm on the backside of 60. I'm 58, if you're wondering, how old is that guy? Um, so I was about third grade. So how old is that? It's about nine. I was about nine years old when I realized I'm going to be an artist. At least that's what I wanted to be. Um, I also wanted to be a rock star. I wanted to be a doctor. I wanted to be a veterinarian. There were a few marine biologists. There were a few other things on my journey. Um, so right out of high or college, by the way, I want to backtrack a little bit. Knowing I wanted to be an artist, I thought I had heard all along about the starving artist. People don't really make a living as an artist. So I, there was a little practical part of my brain that said, you need to get an art education degree and be an art teacher, and then do art on the side. And that's exactly what I did. I went to college right out of high school, got a degree in art education, and I got a job right out of college. I was 21, teaching 14-year-old boys. <laughs> it, I threw up every morning thinking about it, because I was so stressed. I, uh, Anyway, coming back to my original interest in characters, right out of college while I was teaching, I thought I wanted to write a children's book. And this, was, this is early Terry Isaac work. This is pen and ink and watercolor. And this is a, a, a character I drew for a story that I was going to write called A Crab's Home is His Castle. And it's a story about a crab who tries on all these things that he finds on the floor of the ocean. And finally, he finds a shell that fits him. And it's kind of a story about being comfortable in your own skin and who you are, kind of a metaphor. So the title of the book, I never wrote it. It was just an idea. It was A Crab's Home is His Castle. And that was what I thought would be the cover. I started to experiment with other directions with my art. And I thought, I want to get more out of cartooning and more into realism. And so I started to, this is a dragonfly, and this is watercolor. And so I started to do a series of kind of nature-based imagery. And this is the early 1980s. So I've just come out of doing kind of cartooning thing. And I'm starting to really study nature as a point of, of uh, inspiration. This is a great blue heron. And I put an eclipse at the top and great blue heron footprints on the site. So this is kind of my early wildlife art. So this is kind of where I was thinking I wanted to do sort of nature, but with sort of a graphic artist's slant to it. Then I took those works to a local gallery, and they suggested I enter a wildlife stamp contest. And I entered this piece, and it won. And I thought, wow, this is a direction that I should go. And I switched uh, uh, mediums. I went to acrylic. And this was for a trout stamp. And so I thought, OK, um, I'm going to start doing trout stamps and fish stamps. This was one second place for the state of Delaware. What happened is I started to really study what I was painting. And I started to get way out of cartooning and kind of into hyper-realism and really painting light and shadow and texture and color and really trying to see the world um, and depict it as realistically as possible. And so I started to actually 
isolate little areas on my photo reference and isolate areas on my paintings. And I started to paint little small sections. Rather than looking at the whole duck, I looked at just a part of the duck, and I started to get what is called particularity. I started to understand how the unique texture of every little area of the bird or the animal looked. This was the uh, 1991 New York duck stamp. And so this was kind of, I was thinking this is kind of a, a nice direction, but I felt something was missing because it was all about ducks and fish. So I thought, okay, I'm gonna start looking at habitat and landscape and other subject matter other than just ducks and fish. So I started looking at streams and mountains and clouds and other animals. And this was a painting I did. This is called Along the Skagit. And this is more of a landscape painting. This is the Cascade Mountain Range. So this is just Washington State, just below kind of where we live. Uh, have ever, any of you been in this area? It's really pretty, the Northern Cascades. <clears throat> And so I'm really starting to think about a full concept of a landscape with an animal or a bird showing a full habitat. And so this is the artwork that I started pursuing. Then something major happened in my art career. And this, do, you any, of you, do any of you know who this man is? Who is it? Robert Bateman. Yeah. Robert Bateman, um, I took a class from him in 1987, I know it was 1987 because we're wearing the t-shirts that say 1987. <laughs> so that was exactly 30 years ago. This was the pivotal point in my art career of changing from an art teacher and part-time artist to a full-time artist. And he recommended to Millpon Press, who was his publisher, that they publish my work as limited edition prints. This put me on the map. Millpon Press was the leading publisher of North America of realistic nature art. They had over 1,000 galleries, 500 in Canada, 500 in the US, a few in Europe, a few in South Africa, and a few other countries, Belgium, France. So it put my artwork all over. I wrote a book, and um, I got to backtrack here for a second. Robert Bateman wrote the foreword to the book, and the, you probably can't read what that says, but it's about meeting me at the workshop and immediately phoning Melpon Press to tell him to publish me. And it was an amazing time, because um, when I took that painting workshop, it was a fluke. It was from my art teacher from high school who was going through a divorce and asked if I could go in her place. So I didn't even sign up for this Robert Bateman workshop. I just fell into my lap, and then he said, I want to see if you can be published. So it's like all the stars were in line. It was like a Cinderella story, um, and I'm so grateful. And this was the piece. This is a golden eagle, and in the workshop, we were asked to have a slide critiqued. And he said, when this slide of this golden eagle came up, he said, who, who did this? And it's like, crapola. Um, I don't know if it's good or bad. So I kind of uh, raised my hand. And he said, do you have more slides? And so I gave him a whole bunch of slides. And it was after that, he said, I, I want to recommend you. So recommend that they publish your work. Um, so it was a total life-changing experience. So these are some of the covers of the Art for Collectors. And I don't know if any of you have seen some of these uh, um, flyers, but a lot of galleries in Canada still have some of these. And if you were into the art business 20 years ago, these were pretty prevalent. I think these, per, these ones are from the Lloyd Gallery. Um, so if you want to see some, they might have some. Um, so it gave me huge distribution, and I got paid a royalty, um, which was really nice. These are some of the paintings that I did with Mill Pond Press. I have some of these available in my gallery. Um, this is called sunbathers. And what I'm really intrigued with painting is light and the beauty of nature. And my career is really about bringing beauty into this world. And I'm so grateful um, that that's what I do. I'm intrigued with light. Uh, this is from Yosemite National Park in California. I went there in the wintertime hoping I would get winter shots of snow. It rained, I was very upset. The last day the rain stopped, the sun came out, and look what happened. And so sometimes what you think is not good turns out to be good, uh, which was wonderful with getting those light beams. So 
I'm a sucker for light beams and atmosphere. I'm looking for things that I think are magical, and that's what inspires my paintings. Um, this is also about light. This is called Caught by Light. The owl was not there. Um, a lot of times I do a collage, which I'll show you coming up. So usually what inspires a painting is I see a particular setting that I like, and then I think about what sort of animal or bird would best fit into that. And there's some rules of composition, which I'll show here coming up, uh, that I pay attention to. Uh, this was from Ontario, uh, the Blue Jays and the Maple Tree. Here I was really intrigued with the color and the complementary color of the Blue Jays with the orange leaves. This is probably my most famous painting. It's called Face Off. And believe it or not, this polar bear is from the Calgary Zoo. Uh, I don't think he's there anymore. I went there a couple years ago. They didn't have polar bears. But I was standing in front of a big sheet of glass, and there's this polar bear walking right at me, and um, it turned out to inspire a painting. It was a good inspiration because it made the cover of this book called The Best of Wildlife Art, which was an international book. There were 97 countries or 97 artists. I forget what, oh, 96 of the world's finest wildlife artists. And I made the cover. So I was pretty, pretty grateful about that. But one of the highlights of my career was, I'm going to backtrack just a little bit. The art director of a Walt Disney movie went into a bookstore in Los Angeles, California. He found the book, The Art of Robert Bateman. On the back of the book, it said Robert Bateman is published by Mill Pond Press. Well, Walt Disney Productions, the art director, called Mill Pond Press and said, can you send brochures of your wildlife artist, because we're looking for an artist to render a cartoon sketch to make it look realistic. And so they sent a whole bunch of different artists and they sent my brochure, brochure as well. And guess who was picked? Mm -hmm. Terry Isaac. That was my childhood fantasy. When I first saw this movie, I cried. I did. Because it, it was like uh, a dream. And the guy who's the main character, his name's Aladar, and I painted him. And this is my, my rendering. Uh, and it was from a pencil sketch. So what they were looking for was a wildlife artist who could render texture and get the color and the sort of texture of the animal. It was, it was awesome because all the stuff I learned when I was doing those duck stamp designs and fish stamp designs, I was learning about scales and feathers and all of that, and all contributed to that journey. And it was just, my name is in the movie credit. <laughs> it's like, I'm so grateful for that. I'm going to take you on just a quick journey. How, how do I come up with painting ideas and where I get my inspiration? And can you guys see where you are, um, that there's a mom polar bear and two little cubs? Can you make that out? OK. That was, I took this photo. I went to Churchill, Manitoba. That was a child, or not a childhood, but it was a, a definitely a, an adult dream to go to Churchill and see polar bears in the wild. So from that photograph, I cropped in on it, and that was my painting. So that, I had the full, the full picture, um, but that was so, so awesome. And uh, this is from Linden Gardens. This is a photograph. And from the photograph, I cropped it, and this is my painting. So I look for things that are interesting light, interesting texture. Getting back to Robert Bateman, he invited our whole family to his house. My wife was petrified. Um, so our kids are a little bit younger now. So that's Robert Bateman in the top left there, Kathleen, my wife, and our, our boys there. You can tell Daniel, the guy on the right, was having a really good time. <laughs> um, but he did enjoy feeding the koi fish in Robert Bateman's pond in the front of his house. And he liked playing around with Lucas on a cushion on Robert Bateman's deck. When I took that photo, I thought, I don't know what uh, Daniel is doing to his older brother. But I noticed the flowers above them. And I cropped in. Oh, there's, another, there's our parting shot. I cropped in on those flowers. <laughs> and uh, I added in a hummingbird. So that's, this piece is called Bateman's Flowers. And it's, it's right from Robert Bateman's backyard. I gave him a G clay of it. Um, a lot of times when I start a painting, in the olden days, I always did a pencil sketch. Now I do color collage, collages, or I do Photoshop with Doris's assistant, who's right there. She's my helper. 
Um, thanks for coming, Doris. <laughs> so, but I used to do pencil sketches because uh, I, I really like drawing and I teach drawing. Um, and so I'm, that's a, of a robin and some dogwood blossoms. And here's the final painting. Um, here is a painting, so you can kind of see how the process goes. Um, this is called Tiger, Tiger. And I start, usually I paint the background first and then the subject in the, in the foreground last, but I wanted dessert first, so I started with the tiger's face. And then I started to work more on his body, starting to put in the background. And then there's more background. And then finally I added in breath and airbrush to create, create a sense of atmosphere, and that's the final painting. This is a photograph of a pronghorn. This is in Wyoming. And I like the pronghorn. And then I, that same morning, like five or 10 minutes, either after or before I shot that, I got this moon picture. And so I combined the moon with the pronghorn, and that's my painting. So I see stuff. I, I'm, I'm like a sponge. I look for th I don't know what I'm looking for, but I know it when I see it. Um, I like the dappled light of this waterfall and the light hitting a rock, and I visualized a bear in the water, and here's my painting. And I look at diagonal line. I look at how the water creates a diagonal line that pulls your eye to the bear. So I think I'm always thinking about composition, and that's what these arrows show how the how the shapes in the background kind of lead your eye to where the bear is. So this is all planned out before I actually start a painting. This is a photograph of a setting. I like the water moving. I like the glow of the rocks kind of reflecting in the pool of water in the front. And again, I thought a bear would look good. So I thought, oh, maybe two bears. So I added those two bears into that painting. And then I thought, no, I don't like it. It looks like one bear is putting his nose in the other bear's butt, and it just doesn't look right. <laughs> so I painted them out. And I thought, this bear would look better in that painting. So I painted him in. So a lot of times, I think I know the answers, and I don't. But I always like to pretend like I know what I'm doing. That's my secret. Uh, this is on the KVR Trail, the sumac. I don't know if you guys take the KVR Trail on a walk, but there's really beautiful sumac, like late September, October. And so I took a picture of that. It's by the Hillside Winery, right behind the Hillside Winery. If you've ever been to that winery, look at it in the fall, and there's great sumac. I thought, OK, I'm going to crop in on a section, and I'm going to add in a cardinal. And that's my painting. So a lot of times, I see something I like, and I'll crop in on it to find like the very best part that I think would make a good painting. This is a quick painting. Uh, this is actually a view from the gallery uh, that I have. And the back, uh, so that's Skaha Lake and the vineyards. A little bit looser approach, just enjoying the the light and the pattern of the, of the vines of the grapes. Here's another one. That's the backside of Munson Mountain. That's the winery right next to me called the Three Sisters. Kind of looser style, and I'm just kind of enjoying the abstract pattern of our area here. By the way, when artists paint an area that's where they live, they are called what's called a regional artist. And every time, I've moved a few times, and every time I live in a certain area, I like to do paintings that I see right from my own area. Um, there's meaning to it. This is Okanagan Lake. That's Sage Mesa. This painting is really small. It's only about 8 by 11 inches. Uh, grapes. This is on Upper Bench Road, right by the Upper Bench Winery. So I'm inspired by the grapes and the vines and the color. That's Okanagan Lake looking towards uh, Summerland. Sometimes people recognize that little rock that's on the top. Go, I've been on that trail. I know just where that is. And that makes me feel good. Um, getting back to other places, this is Churchill, Manitoba. And what I was inspired by is the light on that water uh, in the foreground. And then I photographed a bear that was also on ice, kind of silhouetted. And I thought, ooh, that would make a neat painting. And so here's my painting. So you can see how it's a collage of the of the strip of light of the water with a sort of a silhouetted bear. So I'm looking for patterns. I'm looking for color. I'm looking for things that are interesting to me. This painting is of an elk, and the setting is from Yellowstone. And I was really intrigued, again, with the light beams and the texture of the aspen trees and 
the lighting and the grass. Um, my wife is British, and early on in our relationship, we went to Wales. And so this fence, this uh, gate with the stone wall, this is actually from Wales. And I added in the, the pheasant for a little more color, because it was a pretty rainy, drab day. Uh, I used to live on the, the west side of Penticton. Um, and this was in my backyard, not the cardinal, but the poppies. And I added in the cardinal because I like to repeat the red. That is actually the same cardinal that I painted with the sumac. So sometimes I paint the same subject more than once, but I flipped them. So hopefully I can get away with that. <laughs> Again, from my own backyard in West uh, Penticton, and I just love the light coming through the poppies. A friend of mine photographed the, the reference for this painting uh, from Winnipeg, so this is basically from the Winnipeg Zoo. But I was really intrigued with the little kitten, the tiger kitten, who you just see one eye poking over the top of mom. I find that intriguing, and the simplicity of sort of the, the light and shadow and, and not having a, a complicated background. This one is called Kicking Snow, uh, and this one's really more about the action of a tiger. It's 36 by 36 inches. All of these paintings now are, are acrylic. This is from Alert Bay. Uh, and I'm very intrigued with First Nation artwork. And I enjoy totem poles very much and masks. And I, I love ravens and eagles. So I just really are in, am in, inspired by their artwork. This is from my own backyard. Uh, this painting is called Quail Crossing. And here's the reference. That's my own fence. And uh, then the flowers I got also from my fence. But quail are pretty prevalent around here. I can't help from wanting to paint them. Uh, we also have chickadees and sunflowers. This is from Summerland, those sunflowers. I added in the chickadees. That's from Wyoming. Um, and that's really about the relationship of the two horses. And again, about the relationship of the two horses. These are also wild horses, and I love horses. Um, these are trumpeter swans. This is about movement and light. This is also about movement. These are uh, orcas. This is just off of Vancouver Island, the reference for this painting. This is another orca. This is called Rainbow Spray. This is called Peekaboo. It's a little bobcat kitten. Uh, Rufus hummingbird with rhododendrons. Uh, hummingbird with roses. This is called raven and moon. I love ravens. They're one of my favorites. This is called Mr. Personality. They're very inquisitive. This is a river otter. Another hummingbird with uh, some fuchsia. This is called Moving Day. Um, there's a place in Montana that has animals that are raised in captivity, but they're used in movies and TV documentaries and for professional photographers. And I paid to go there in the springtime when they had their babies, and I photographed the reference for this painting. It was really cool to see the mom actually moving the babies from one site to another, and she's very gentle. It looks like she's killing it, but she really wasn't. The kitten was fine. And this is a... a Raccoon, and this is more about a landscape, really, than the raccoon. I love water. It's something I really enjoy painting. Here's another one with water. Water and light. This is called Testing New Waters. It's a little baby goose. And what's ironic is I photographed this guy. This is, I'm originally from Salem, Oregon. And uh, I photographed this little gosling in a stream that was right by a penitentiary. I thought, here, it's ironic. Here's this little goose that's about to be free and doing his own thing and exploring new water. And there's people who are right across the way there who are in jail and not moving too far. Um, anyway, sorry about that thought, but it was ironic, I thought. Um, I do photograph wildlife. And that is a moose, and it's a live moose. And I, there was another photographer who photographed me photographing the moose. And here is a painting of that same moose battling another moose. 
And I try to be very careful, but occasionally I take a few chances. There was an RV right by me, so if that moose tried to charge me, I would move quickly underneath the RV. This is a raven with a to totem pole from Haida Gwaii, which I also have been. That's one of the things I really love, is traveling to get my reference material. Uh, this is from the Sonoran Desert Museum. There was a cougar that was taking a little nap in a cave. And there was a piece of glass uh, where I was looking at the cougar. I, I just love the simplicity of the, the light and shadow and the design of the cat and how relaxed he looks. This is from Abbotsford, the reference for this painting. Uh, they have a little uh, uh, bird of prey show where they fly various birds of prey. And when I saw that in my camera, I thought, ooh, I want to paint that. I do enjoy um, petroglyphs and pictographs. And I don't know if you can make them out with this on the wall there of the rock. Um, I liked painting abstract patterns of nature. And that's what inspired this painting. Uh, with this aspen tree with a little downy woodpecker. Um, this was also from Winnipeg, same tiger, mom and baby. This is called Warm Pillow. Uh, this is the Grand Canyon, and there's a little raven flying with a rainbow in there. And This is from uh, the Tetons with some pronghorn. This is from my front yard. My son Daniel, who looked crabby in the early, earlier photo with Robert Bateman, Found a snail. I let him keep it for a day or two. I said, but you have to let the snail go. You can put it anywhere in the yard you want. He said, I want to put it with the tulips. So we let it go. And we watched the tulip, or we watched the snail go up the tulip stem and into the blossom. And I thought, this is a painting. And I ran off. And I got my camera. And I took some pictures. I have never seen a snail painting in a tulip before. But maybe it, they were out there. But uh, anyway, th that's what inspired this painting. This is called Visitor in Blue. This is called The Good Place Wolves. I don't remember the name of this. It's an eagle in a tree. That's part of the battle, trying to title paintings. It's like, I don't, Sentinel. Sentinel. I've used that one too, by the way, Sentinel. That's good. I think this one's called Making Friends. Um, these are horses that I photographed. This is a painting, but the horses I photographed in the Tetons in Wyoming. I do domest domestic animals, and getting back to the theme, making a living as an artist, how do you sell paintings? I, I am open to painting people's pets. And uh, so this was a pet portrait. Uh, this is another pet portrait. My favorite part of doing this painting was the pink nose with the little sheen on it. I do people's horses, but I really like painting wild creatures. And uh, this became a painting called Disappearing Footprints, and this is the painting. This is a, a real Anukshuk that I photographed in Churchill. This is a real polar bear that I photographed in Churchill. I collaged those together for this painting. Follow the rule of thirds if you're a photographer or a fellow painter. A lot of times where I place my subject definitely fits into that rule of thirds composition. And you can see how I use the rock formation also to guide abstract lines to the focal point of the painting. So I put a lot of thought before I actually start a painting. That's me on the very far left. So that's in Churchill. And that gives you an idea how big that Anukshuk um, really is. That's what we drive in to look at the polar bears. And that gives you a concept of how far off the ground you are. A polar bear is six feet. It's the biggest carnivore on the planet. So that gives you kind of an idea how big that, that, uh, that tour bus is. There's a polar bear. That was the first bear I saw. Bears like to relax a lot. And uh, they also like to play. They also kind of play boxing. They're waiting for the Hudson Bay to freeze over. So there's a lot of kind of downtime while, while they're waiting. Um, getting back to the business end, I have my own gallery. And um, that's a photograph of the gallery. It's at Spiller, on Spiller Road. or uh, It used to be called Spiller Corner, but it's on uh, Upper Bench Road, right on your way going to Naramata. When I had my grand opening, um, Robert Bateman sent me this drawing to, for Terry, a brilliant artist. Best wishes for your opening. Birgit and Bob Bateman. 
And that was so nice. If that gallery ever catches on fire, I'm gonna grab this painting, this first. It means a lot to me. This is me in the gallery. And on the ground, or on the floor there, you can see there's a painting of an elk, a mountain goat, and an eagle. I usually have up to five paintings, maybe sometimes more than five paintings, that I'm working on at the same time. I get bored easily, and I want, I like variety. <laughs> so I, I'll work on one, and then I'll start another, then I'll go back to another one. So I kind of rotate. So that's how I work. I stand up, and I paint on a drafting table, um, and I paint in acrylic. So this is my studio uh, where I paint. And sometimes TV shows even come to my studio. <laughs> and I think that's you, isn't it? You didn't even know I was going to have this slide. This is Go Okanagan, and I was giving a lesson on painting a panda. Uh, and they did it, like in 20, how long did it take? 20, 30? Just a few minutes. It just, was amazing. Thanks, yeah. Well, uh, well, they had a great host on it. So anyway, that was a fun, fun project. This is a Komodi bear, uh, or sometimes they're called a spirit bear, um, ghost bear. It's, this is the only one in captivity, and it's in Kamloops. And this is a picture I took of it. But I've also been to the Great Bear Rainforest. So I took this picture. I never saw a spirit bear in the Great Bear Rainforest, but I did see one in Kamloops. So this is what the Great Bear Rainforest looks like, and this is a photograph that I took of the Great Bear Rainforest. So I superimposed that on top of that. But I should give credit where Sandy, who worked for me before Doris, did the work, but I said, I want to move it here. So it's really neat to work with people who can figure out what, how to make it move. So that's another position, and then there's another position, and there's another position. So I play a lot, around a lot. A lot of people think I just you know, copy a photograph, but I take sections of photos, and I collage them together to come up with a painting idea. I haven't done this painting yet, but I, I think that's where I want him. I am working on a, on a children's book. Uh, I'm not the author, but I am an artist. And it's about two painted turtles uh, and their brothers. And this is one of the illustrations from that book. So it's kind of coming full circle for me, because that was what I originally wanted to do. And I'm currently working on a children's book. Getting back to marketing yourself as an artist, the key is multiple streams of income. I don't rely on any one particular thing. This is a calendar, 2017 calendar. And this is what's called a licensing product. And I have calendars, cards, t-shirts, um, candles, oh, pardon? Cups, mugs, um, agenda calendars, um, there's more. Um, and so that's part of how I make my living. Also how I make my living is I teach. And here I'm giving a workshop. And I know several of you in the audience have taken workshops. From... Raise your hand again if you've taken a workshop. Awesome. Keep your hand up if you really like that workshop. <laughs> woo <-hoo! laughs> Thank you so much. So that's another way that I make an income. So I sell original paintings. I sell licensing products where I get a royalty. I, I teach. This is a workshop in uh, Sherwood Park, right near Edmonton. And I had everybody paint a bighorn sheep with a background. They all did a fabulous job. Um, I also work with Ducks Unlimited. And here I am in Winnipeg signing a big stack of prints. And I'm very happy to be doing that. That's why I'm grinning from ear to ear. Um, and that's very similar to what I did in the days when I worked with Mill Pond Press, is signing prints. And there was somebody that pulled the prints for me. Ducks Unlimited is just one um, company that I work with. I have donated money to um, um, well, all sorts of people, um, to the National Cancer Institute. Um, I've donated money to International Mountain Gorilla Fund, to Snow Leopard Fund, um, to quite a few other ha Habitat for Humanity. Um, recently, I had an art show where I benefited the alley cats. Um, and so I use my art to help animals and people. And I, that's one of the rewards of having art as a career, is how can I give back to the community? How can I give back to animals and our planet? 
and uh, Ducks Unlimited, the proceeds from the prints, goes directly to wetland habitat. So I feel really good about using my art as a vehicle to, to help the planet. And all of us know the planet needs all the help it can get. Here I am working on a painting. This is of the Oregon coast. This is a more recent painting. I think, Doris, you took this photo, didn't you? And we just sent that one off. Calendars. Uh, I also sell DVDs, instructional DVDs, how to paint. I also do art shows to help promote my art. Um, so here I am actually in a booth. You can see it's the art of Terry Isaac. That's who I was promoting. <laughs> and uh, the main reason that I do art um, is to benefit the planet. And I can't think of better people to benefit than my own children. And this is Evan and Daniel. And we're at Manning Park. Um, and I took them there in the fall. A lot of times when I go on a reference trip, I want to go when the color is good or the atmosphere is good. And they really enjoyed it. And that's, it's really nice when you get kids who love nature.